<laughs> All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. It's Jennifer Britton, and it is the 3rd of September. We are talking today the eight li layers of remote work. I am flying solo with our community members today for at least the first part. Michelle will hopefully be with us at, towards the end of the call. But the great thing about partnership is you always have someone else's back. So I want to welcome Jennifer and Linda. Thanks for joining us for another month. As we step into September, this is the month that's often likened as the second year, new year, or the second part of the new year. So maybe it's time for a reset, or maybe it's a time to sort of accelerate. I don't know about you, but um, Linda, what's, do you have a theme for the month of September, or what are you hoping this fall will bring for you? I would definitely say reset. That is the <laughs> perfect word. So yes, absolutely. It's like to me, fresh start, new beginning, just reset. Let's just, let's hit the ground running. Let's give her, it sounds like. And, and how about you, Jen G? What, what is your theme this month? Oh my goodness. I, Linda, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> it was perfect. I was like, cause I was on the tip of my tongue, but I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, that's it. So yeah. reset for sure. Yes. Yeah. It's been quite the year for, for everyone and me personally too. So um, September feels like a, a reset. Yeah, well, let's reset on. And, and actually, Michelle and I are really pleased to bring to you a piece that sort of evolved very naturally. Like it's, it's interesting, I think in our podcast over the last year, we started about 10 months ago. We've had such interesting guests and different conversations. And this whole notion of layering has really shown up in our conversations, in Michelle's work and my work. And so today's topic is all about the eight layers of remote work. And I really hope that everyone listening in, whether you're here live or other, it really is going to like give you a, a further appreciation as you maybe do a reset or a continued arc forward. Um, so we want to just play around a little bit with visuals today as well. And I'm curious, um, just as you look at the screen, what are the top three words that are immediately sticking out for you or standing out for you? Just write down the first three words that hit your brain and then we'll share it. So I'm going to just let someone in and, and as we let in our colleague, Melissa, want to say welcome to you, Melissa. It's good to have you here today. And I've got a very quick exercise for you to participate in right away. Just look at the screen and see what are the top three words that immediately, immediately hit your retinas. So write those down. We're going to share them because it's sort of interesting there. The, today's call is all about the eight layers of virtual or the eight layers of remote work. There are a lot of different elements that we've been talking about over the last few months. And I think this graphic in its own D-ish way <laughs> captures many of them. So I'll just kick off by saying the ones that really captured my eye right away were digital, dozen, no surprise, because those are my, my characters that I've come up with in my writing in the last 16, 18 months, but also um, design. I think I've really become so aware in the work of my clients and the work that I support in my own program design of how important it is to design intentionally. If any of you have joined me recently for effective virtual conversations calls, we've talked about how important it is to have a bit of a roadmap and have that plan. In fact, it was that roadmapping from my work as a virtual facilitator that I think led to the name Pathways because it's really hard to show up in the virtual space and just sort of like iterate all the time. So those are my three words, digital dozen, which really represents the, like the, the avatars, the 12 different characters we've been following from Mo, the creative solopreneur, to Sujit, who's our project manager, from Jane and Joe, our virtual team leaders, and also our virtual facilitator, to Alex, who works in the voluntary sector. And as you continue to listen in to episodes with us here at Remote Pathways, you're gonna hear real-time stories. So uh, it's great to have Jennifer G back with us. And Jennifer, you've come and talked to us already around strengths. You'll be back with us on a future episode pretty soon that will be released. And so stay tuned with that. So I think I'm gonna go in our order that we called in today. Linda, would you mind sharing which, which three Ds stood out for you? Sure, decisions, determination, and discipline. 
Mm -hmm. So in your reset, are those words that you want to be embracing in your? Uh, absolutely. 100% okay. all three of them. So already, if this was the end of the episode, I'm good. This helps. Me. <laughs> That's what we aim to please, right? Like, and what I love about the remote space is it doesn't have to take long. In fact, we don't have long sound bite time. It's like five to 10 minutes is pretty much a lot of people's attention. If you don't hit it fast in the remote space, you might not, you might not have people. They may actually be here, but not physically here. So we've heard from Linda, Jen G, what is yours? What are your three words? So mine are decisions, mm -hmm. design, and delegation. Ooh. Yeah. Anything you want to share with us on the relevance of those words for you right now? Just completely relevant in terms of um, there's some decisions I need to make. And certainly, you know, um, being an entrepreneur and being in the remote space, the, um, the design is, is like you just mentioned, it's kind of an ever present um, thing that we're dealing with and delegation as well. Uh, we, we can't do it all on our own. And so um, that's a skill set. If, um, you know, if I'm, if you're not already skilled at it, you need to get there. <laughs> so um, yeah. Yeah. Those are three for me today. Fantastic. Thank you. And Melissa, I love looking at that beach behind you and <laughs> I'd like to welcome you back. Good to have you. Thank you for joining us. So super early in the morning. What, which words are standing out for you today? Oh, aren't D words great? There's just so many of them. <laughs> I love um, decisions for sure. Uh, and then I would say, um, I mean, design is important for sure for, for the digital space. And, um, and then distractions is probably so. And decisions around distractions because distractions are just... Um, so much part of life and easy to get, you know, easy to justify when we're, when we're working remotely, because there's, there can be that, you know, non blend or that, that too much of a blend of, of, of your day and what's, you know, I need to do this and I need to do that. So really, really getting a handle around the distractions and preparing for them and not allowing them to um, be part of, of, um, time that is dedicated to working digitally. Love that. Love that. Yeah. And, and I think you've certainly given voice for uh, how I have felt many times, especially this summer as I worked remote remote. So I just came back down to my main office last night after really like two blissful months of working in a place that, well, it has no distractions because it's, it's really in the middle of the woods. Um, there are a lot of distractions because it's a 92 year old building that I could be working on regularly, but need to get my work done. So again, no right or wrong answer in this, but just notice for each one of us, a different lens, a different focus, different priorities and different layers. And I think that's another really important piece of working in the remote space is our reality, our perspective may be radically different from someone else's, yet all we see are these little context windows, as I say in my writing, like the two by three window that we see each other's world. So thank you for having fun. I hope that this was a useful exercise. And again, you can come back and look at it. I think it's one of those sort of like optical illusions maybe, and I won't talk about the science behind that, but you know, it could be something that you could return back to and see if maybe next time there was something else that showed up first in your mind because the reticular activating system, which is part of our brain actually is the, the thing that really starts to weed out all of the information. So there probably is something about these words that we chose and the real priorities at a gut level, even if we don't recognize them yet. How did those three words really, how could they really have impact for us in our working life? So any final comments on, on just this graphic before we, we head off onto like what these eight layers really are? Well, I don't know. You just kind of, um, I, I took my, I just took a screenshot of that so that I could actually just go back and look at it because that, that kind of piqued my curiosity to be like, you know what, if you come back to it, because just honestly, it was very helpful immediately. So I took a screenshot. Lovely. And you're making me think too, Linda, what I'll make sure I do if um, you haven't joined us over at the Instagram feed. So we have at Remote Pathways on Instagram. 
Okay. Um, because I've been remote, I haven't been posting quite as regularly, but this will be a great graphic. I think I'll share it up there in the next week or two. So want to talk a little bit, we'll come into the, the eight layers, but you know, think about how this can really influence where you are, wherever you are. We're still in Q3, even though it might seem like the start of a new year. As we've made our journey this year, we've looked at focus, we've looked at experimentation. This quarter, we were really labeling it motivation. And again, I think if you think about those three words and motivation, notice where your energy is. Do you get excited by those three things that you talked about? For me, as I said, it was like digital dozen and design. And so I've been really excited, but sort of scared to be moving some manuscript work ahead this summer. Um, but it, it's just, I know that it's needed. And so looking at not only our motivation, but also looking at how do we keep our motivation going when there's lots on flow to Melissa's point, but also really core projects in the long term that are important to keep moving. So in, a, in about a month, we will start moving into Q4, which is our re reflection phase. And whether this feels like the start of a new year or really it's like winding down and you're ready for that last Q4, keep joining us. We'll be, we'll be here for the next, you know, twice a month for the next four months. So let's talk this month really about the layers of remote work and the graphic that I just shared with you that Michelle and I created really was a new um, sort of framing of something that you, I think you'll hear us talking a lot more intentionally about. You might have heard these layers in our first 20 episodes um, and our first, our 20th episode, I think was released yesterday, I want to say. It's either yesterday or next week. We've talked a lot in the last few months about things like gearing up for remote work. And again, with September being the month of many people, some people stepping back into the office, some schools starting up, some schools starting up in a bridged way, this really is often seen as the second part of the year. So feel free to go back and listen not only to episode 19, which I think was gearing up for remote work, but also our, call, our water cooler conversation about two weeks ago in mid-August. And you can find those over at YouTube uh, under effective group coach. So here are the eight layers of remote work. And we've just talked about them in that graphic. So as Michelle and I sat down a few weeks ago, we were like, you know, what are some of these themes that we've been seeing? So I just want to share these eight areas just to get you thinking about how it might be important or how it might be showing up in your work. These are just the layers where each one of our attention can be focusing on and listening for and listening to different areas. So of course, we're now in this digital ecosystem, which for a lot of professionals is a very different radical way of working. Some of the themes that we've touched on are things like leadership is different in the remote space. And if you haven't listened to episode 17, where we talked about how every person, every professional in the remote space needs to be a leader, or at least have leadership skills, take a listen to that because in the digital space whether we're new or we're a seasoned experience a seasoned experienced professional we really have to work through people so i know many of you bring coaching as sort of like a round or a wheelhouse skill set this is where i think coaching is going to continue to be such an important skill set and profession for all of us that work in the remote space. And as I like to remind people, like the only reason I became a coach years ago was because I was a team leader. I realized as a remote team leader, I could not lead in the way that a lot of books in those days in the nineties were saying, you have to lead like this as a leader. And it's like, but wait, my team is across 10 countries. My team is in 25 different professional areas. I'm not that technical expert. I need to empower my team and really help them do their best work. And that's how I fell into coaching back in the early 2000s. So really think about the digital ecosystem and whether you're an entrepreneur, a leader or both or some other role, like what are the skills that are, are critical? And as we've heard, you know, a big piece of this work, as much as we wanna put decisions off, there is at some point that split in the path. <laughs> Hence why we called this pod podcast, the remote pathways, because each one of us, even in our own role as a business owner, as a leader, as a project manager, as a solopreneur, every day we're faced with different decisions. Last summer, one of my favorite 
creative writing projects, which will come out sometime in the next 12 months, is a really a choose your own adventure book for remote workers. And it really is about taking those different pathways. I don't know about you, but when I was a young girl, I loved those choose, those choose your own adventures, how that I could make a different decision every time and it would really influence where we go. So think about what decisions, as Jennifer said, you want to be making or you need to be making. And also think about the cost if you're not making decisions. What's happening when you're going or getting stuck at a certain point? And maybe there's a question there. Maybe there's a question to help you lead to the right or the left. And it might simply be, you know, what's the cost of inaction? What's the worst that could happen? So think about the decisions that you are engaging with, embarking on, and perhaps there might be some fora that are useful to have conversation around. Again, another piece of this remote work world is that we're really, in many instances, like we are in isolation, even if we're together. So how do we create those supportive communities to be able to talk through and talk about the important things that were on our journey around? And maybe that's where we can hear other people's stories, hear of other people's examples, so that we can make the important decisions that need to be had at the moment. So those are the first two, digital and decisions. The next one we wanted to tackle, because it's really been a sub-theme, is the topic of delegation. And I think, Jennifer, you pointed to this one, like, how are you delegating? Even if you're a solopreneur, there are ways that we can bring on team members for short projects, for longer projects. One thing I've been thinking about this fall is I'll, I'd really like to bring on some interns in my work um, to really take some leads on different programs. And I almost see that as sort of a foray to maybe growing out my team because with five different brands under my company's umbrella of potentials realized, it's really grown way too big for me. As much as I automate and systematize, it needs like more intensive focus. So think about what you could be delegating and what's important for you as you think about not only your um, maybe next six months, but the next six years or the next six decades. Because as much as business has changed, something we're seeing is that, you know, and, and we've seen this for decades, I won't go into the backstory, but like the digital world, which we call the virtual world, which we've called the internet world, has always created, um, even since its inception in the back in the 90s, has created a new layering of haves and have nots. And so where do you want to be in the process of, you know, really opportunity and acceleration? One of the projects that really stands out, which still leads me in my current work, is, as some of you know, I used to work in the international development sphere for the United Nations and for Canadian and British aid organizations. And about 24, probably 24 years ago now, I was, um, I got a call at my office in this country in South America. I was based in the headquarters. I was supporting teams that were all across what we called in that country, the hinterland, which were literally either very riverine or jungle based environments. So this was a country that took, literally could take five days of travel on foot, on horseback, on army truck, on dugout canoe, on tractor to get into those very remote locations. And I had a call from one of the one of the government agencies that worked in the country along with their local partner and I said, "Listen, we want to give this community that we know you have a team, you know, connected to. We want to we want to provide a community with um, they've asked for a satellite panel, uh, sorry, they've asked for a solar panel uh, computer." which would be connected to this new internet thing, as they called it, uh, by solar panels and a satellite connection. Could you help us um, get into that community so that we can give the community this solar powered paneled computer and the satellite connection? I was really intrigued. I was like, absolutely, let's see what we could do. So I traveled in with the funder in this, like I figured there would be a lot of stuff that we'd have to be carrying, but literally it fit in like two little backpacks. So it was a solar panel and that powered this um, much heavier laptop, but it really was like a very sturdy laptop that then had all these wires and there was a satellite phone connection, which in that, in those days, in the 1990s, phones were probably your biggest thing. They didn't fit in our pockets in those days. They fit in a real bag. 
So off we went and this community as we arrived, I won't give the community's name, but we arrived and like most hinterland communities in this country, their school was a banab. It was literally a space in the middle of the community. And you would think, oh, there are desks and there's a place to write. It was really a meeting place. And for the community, it had served a good purpose. But this, the teachers, along with parents and students, had realized they didn't have any resources to work on. They didn't have paper. They didn't have books. And they had really started hearing through people who were moving through their village and their community had started hearing about this new thing called the internet and very you know, forward thinking community, the captain or what is known as the head of the community had reached out in collaboration with the school teachers um, to this funding agency and said, listen, we'd like to be a pilot community and try this out. And so literally like within probably 20, 25 minutes of arriving into this community, along with the captain of the village, along with the, you know, the head of the school, and with all these community members around, they were connected to the internet. And in those days, it wasn't as speedy as it is today, but to just see how people were like, wow, like I can access information. I don't think that was really probably the first thought, but this is a community that I continued to visit probably every three to six months for the next few years. And you could literally see how the access to information really became such a game changer. And that's a big part of what we, what we operate in in the digital space. It's, it can be an equalizer and it can also be something that does create inequity. So part of my work is always thinking about how do we bring, um, you know, how do we bring equity into, into the work that we do as facilitators, as coaches? How do we also ensure that all voices are in the room? And with that, it may be looking at, you know, what is really important in terms of bringing the conversation to. So I digress there. Um, hope you followed the, pit, the trail, but <laughs> control, decisions, delegation, all really key so that we are focusing on what is most important in our work. And that, you know, may be our core reason for why we do what we do. And as Melissa said, it's probably important to be noticing what are the distractions getting in the way. So invitation, as we step into the last four months of the year, what do you want to start saying no to? Not what you want to do, number seven, but what do you want to start saying no to? Are there some practices that are really calling you off course? Are there some things that you're realizing you've been holding on to that maybe need to let, be let go of? Or maybe there's another type of distraction that really isn't serving you and serving the work that you do. So I'm going to pause here because I've talked way too long for my liking. Digital, decisions, delegation, distractions. What's the new layer? As I've just shared a little bit here, is, are there some new layers here for, you, for any of you on one or more of these topic areas? Um, I mean, really, the decisions, the questions that you just asked, you know, what's the cost of not making decisions? Um, that really stuck you know, stood out to me. Um, so just with the, even seeing this in front of me, you know, it just it's kind of calling me out, kind of calling me to the table of like, it's time because I am being distracted by not making, like it's a distraction to not make a decision. So I'm not able to move forward unless I do that. So, yeah. Well, Thank you, Linda, for giving voice to something that I think we all experience, myself included, right? Like when we're in that place of not yet having decided, there's a lot of energy that we're expending that's not going anywhere, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's holding us in place. So even if we make the decision, and we might, we never usually know if it's the right decision too, right? We don't know <laughs> until we go down the pathway, whether it's the best decision, but at least we've made a decision and we can keep moving and getting data and trying things out and experimenting. Yeah. Okay. And Jennifer G, I saw you take your mic off. Is there something you want to add here? Yeah. I, Linda, thank you for saying that because that's definitely a theme for me as well. And um, I was actually just reading up on that and, you know, they were talking about like the tremendous energy it actually takes to not make a decision <laughs> and that, you know, if you make a decision, um, you know, there, you actually will get a rush of energy to like be moving forward. And that you can always um, pivot down the road, 
Um, but the, like just the power in making a decision, even if the, you know, you fear that it's the wrong one, but, um, you know, just psychologically, emotionally, even physically, it takes so much energy to not make a decision. Wow. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that because that yeah. explains <laughs> that why explains you're so tired. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes. Why am I so tired from not making a decision? Yes. Yeah. And the other piece to that, Jen, that you spoke to was the supportive community um, needed to help make decisions. Um, I'm a verbal processor. And um, in this new digital world, I'm, I, I'm spending a lot of time alone and I can kind of just mull things over in my head. And it's funny, if I get an opportunity to talk to somebody, I've usually had it figured out. I just don't know it until I have an opportunity to say it out loud and process it with somebody else. And it's like, oh, there it was. Like, it surprises me. But it's been kind of locked in my head because I am a verbal processor. I need to hear myself say it in order to know it. And, so and, I, and I believe that's what's happened on this call, actually, for myself. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. I didn't under, I really did not know so much that I was kind of paralyzed by not making decisions. So it's been a great call. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Well, I find it interesting that, you know, dialogue is immediately underneath decisions. In fact, you know, you can look at that whole layer. And, and one of the reasons I think I can speak here for Michelle, like we really have enjoyed hosting these calls. They originally were going to be like a monthly thing. And then it was like, you know what, let's get like a bi-weekly rhythm going. Like there's something about rhythm in community. There's something super important about dialogue because to what you've just shared, Jennifer and Linda, we often need to talk it out. And what are those fora that we have to speak what's on our mind? And so again, so pleased to hear that the dialogue piece is key. As we have the dialogue, we may go back to our blueprints on design. Remember, blueprints are blueprints. They're not like something stuck in one way. We can erase them. We can redraw them. And I think that's another important thing. As we go down those pathways, what are we learning? What are we noticing? What do we need to design or redesign so that we can really keep moving and doing? And it's through the doing that we really get the, the data. And that then allows us to move into some layering of depth. And again, in all of our work, there's these multiple layers. Yeah, I, certainly, as Michelle and I were talking about, I was really cognizant in, in not only my work, but the work with the clients that I work with, whether they're teams or organizations or individuals right now, is they're realizing that there's all these different layers that they've never thought about. Like they've thought about leadership, but they've thought about leadership at a certain level of the organization. They're now realizing like, we need to take this out to the masses. Or they're also realizing that, you know what, like, yes, I can be a good leader in this area, but there's also a whole other depth of, of areas that I need to be um, building skill and muscle around. So I'd love to keep talking about this. And I've just looked at my watch to see, you know what, our time is drawing to a near. Melissa, for you, is there anything you want to mention that, that sort of percolated up as we looked at this, this eight layers very quickly? Wow. Well, um, and I always say it's five, well, it's 5.30 now in the morning, but my <laughs> coffee's kicking in. Um, I uh, really like this a lot. Like, I really like this a lot. Um, it's very helpful. And because, you know, just to, I'm an auditory and a verbal processor, like um, uh, we say process, right? And Americans say process. Is that how it works? <laughs> but, um, and so it, it, it just helps. Yeah. Because when everything stays up here and I am finding, like I was looking for a 1-800 number the other day and yesterday and like, you can't talk to anybody anymore, right? Because, and so even though, you know, I, I want to be proficient in the digital world, it's, it's all for me about the connection that I'll ultimately have, because that's important to me. I wouldn't want to spend 100%, but it gets me to do, you know, for the one-on-ones, like in the end, right? To get that message across and then deal with those people that, that we can connect with. So, um, but, but, but it is, um, it is important to have the, the people that you can dialogue with and it's choosing those people in that community, whether it's a mastermind or, um, whatever it is 
that you can regularly, um, but you're probably not going to find one group of people for absolutely everything. I mean, you may as, as a friend or as a small community, but um, with all that's entailed, you're going to have different. And so you really need to say, you know, what's needed here, maybe in the eight areas of this part of my digital work. And then there's that part of my digital work. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very empowering what you've created here, what you, yeah. Well, thank you. And, and again, I'm sure Michelle will be listening back to this recording. And, you know, not to overcomplicate, because really we will always want to simplify in a remote space, right? Like complexity gets us stuck. And when we can simplify, when we can take one step at a time, we get into action, we get into that doing. But notice like each one of our maps, right? Our pathways are all different. And so to your point, Melissa, I think there really is value in moving across communities, moving across disciplines, learning from different types of people at different times, because we're all in a different location. And unlike, you know, a face-to-face -face environment where we share the same context, this goes back to sort of part of the reason why we've called it layers is that our contexts are radically different and our focus is radically different. So really be noticing what's going to help you and what conversations you want to be a part of, what conversation spaces are you creating, especially as coaches? I think that's always an important question because as much as we are sort of like consumers of each one of these, we are also the creator of them as well. So in your work, like what is that hub? Is there a space for dialogue that is gonna be your area? And I use that term hub very selectively because about a month ago, I started my own Facebook group. I didn't think that I would start a Facebook group this year, but it became really apparent that as much as I've been trying to you know, create a community off Facebook, so many people are on Facebook. So I may have mentioned this last time, but if you're on Facebook, join us at the Virtual Remote Visionaries Hub. It's the VRVH, which is really just a meeting space where I'm you know, hosting, but also uh, one thing I'm committed to this year is creating dialogue through challenges. And I did a standout virtually challenge a few weeks ago that people loved because it, it, again, it brought people together for a short amount of time to really look at what's it gonna take to stand out virtually. So if you miss that, that's okay because I'm gonna be doing a one day on September 17th and I'll be doing other challenges. So as you think about September and as you're moving into your back to work, who are you going back to work as? What do you want to be focusing on? Um, you've met some of our digital dozen in the last year. You'll be meeting more of them as my work is published in 2021. And uh, we can be whoever we want to be. In fact, many times we wear multiple hats. We might be a bit of a project manager in one role. We might be a mentor in the next conversation. We might be like Sam, who's on the bottom, like going to sell her business for a billion dollars. If I got to work with Sam, I'd be so excited. She would be my mentor right now. I'm like, how do I scale this business for like monetization and sale? <laughs> so anyone who's listening, this just come and contact me. Um, but we really could be like very intentional on how we want to really look at this. So you will see this focus. I know some of you have taken a screenshot of it already. Please just attribute it to Remote Pathways podcast if you don't mind and use it. See if every time you pick it up, some new words are circulating or percolating up. So as always, um, we've got new episodes out. As I said, like we've just released episode 20. So this is not a podcast that was a, like one and done. It is an ongoing, uh, hopefully contribution to the digital space. And our episode this week that you'll have up uh, for the next two weeks is called Back to Remote Work. Not back to work, but back to remote work. And there is a back to work checklist um, for the remote space. If you'd like to download that, you can find that at remotepathways.com forward slash podcast. So remotepathways.com forward slash podcast. And every episode actually has a download either provided by us as in this case or by our guests. So make sure that you're using those and um, you know, feeding forward. We'd really like a couple of requests. We, we would love for you to please comment and share. You know, it's really important that podcasts are also reviewed. So on whatever platform you are on, review our podcast episode that you've just listened to. Was it a five star? Was it a four star? Like leave a comment. We really want this to go out. But of course, there is the whole algorithm which is like not controlled by us. So we really would love to ask for your support to please share the word about this podcast. 
And there is also uh, the blog, which content changes weekly, at least this year. We're on week 34 of the year. And the focus this month is, oh, sorry, the focus this week is all about presentations. And so again, that sort of is influenced by the standout virtually work that I've just completed. You might wanna think about how can a mentor help you, right? Where is that next growth edge for you? Is it time to get a new mentor? Is it time to find a new mentor? Someone who will help you with those decisions or maybe validate the decisions you've made or simply give you great resources. And I think even within our community, we're all finding mentors of the moment, right? It doesn't have to be a long-term thing. So I'm conscious of time. Here's our quote of the week, James Cash Penny. Growth is never by mere chance. It is the result of forces working together. So with that, I want to wish you a great start of the new month. Let's wrap up our call today by just having you share. Um, I'm going to go to that energy flow, right? One layer of this work is really noticing our energy. We might not always be conscious of it, but when we are able to get conscious of it, it can be like, you know, a bit of a, uh, I like to liken it as a water flow, right? It can help us move forward. It can maybe take us to some new areas. Uh, but what is that energy you're leaving today's call with? And Linda, I'll start with you again. Determination. Determination. Thank you. Jennifer G, what's your energy that you're leaving today's call with? Um, wow. It's, it's like a river and, um, it's been a bit dammed up and it still is like there's some action I need to take. So, um, ready for it to flow again. Ooh, love that. And Melissa, what is yours? Mm, boy. Oh my goodness. It's, um, it's a feeling and I have to put it into words. <laughs> so here's um, the feeling living just even where in your body is that feeling residing right now? Ah, it's, it's here, like right in my, I guess, is solar plexus or, mm -hmm. and um, uh, was my birthday yesterday and I'm always like making new resolves and, and, um, and so where I'm at right now is, um, it's interesting, like create something like small and then and then work on the other pieces so it's kind of you know not having every piece in in place but creating something that that you know to, for that creative process and then bringing bringing in the other factors to put it out there digitally so it's kind of a um a, a different focus because because all of it is too much but sometimes you just have to do the work on something small and then try it. So that's that's kind of so. So uh, uh, the feeling is hope and um, excitement and just just simple right now. Love that. So, and do do what's right in front of you. Right. We don't always see our own maps. Right. We may see other people's maps, but we just see what's in front of us. And as we move, the fog will lift. As we move, the next the next turn of the river will show up. Uh, my, my energy, and it's more of a visual metaphor, so I'm a swimmer, and I've been really lucky this summer to swim all summer long, and to Jennifer's point, I'm actually like two kilometers, there's my Canadian side, two kilometers, about a kilometer and a half actually, down river from a dam, right, it's, been, it's like a hundred year old dam, and at this time of year, they change the water level, so it's been really, really low, and so I'm in a bay, and I don't always notice the, like, the flow of the river, but in the last two days, so I came down last night, my last swim yesterday, like the water level had gone up two feet in about a 24 hour period and you could feel the water. And so, you know, as a swimmer, it's like, I've really spent a lot of time this summer as I've been feeling, feeling much better than I was a few months ago, getting back into shape, get, rebuilding my musculature and like, I'm ready to swim again. Like, but I'm ready now to swim in an arena where we are, it's, it's much more full, like there's more energy, there's more flow. And the digital space is continuing to grow, which is a really, really exciting thing. So on behalf of Michelle and I, thank you for joining us. Our next episode, which will come out in mid, um, mid month of September is actually on co-working in the remote space. Love the graphic that Michelle has pulled together. We hope that you'll join us 
two weeks today. That'll be a 7.30 a.m. Eastern call. So if you are a bit earlier, you'll have a 30 minute time, time to sleep in. As I mentioned that same day, I'll be hosting the Standout Virtually Masterclass Studio Day, which is gonna be a one day for you to design and connect with others around what you're creating in terms of your virtual programming. So you can find out more about that at standoutvirtually.com. I always like to just leave it really super simple. But if you join with a friend, you actually get a discount. So if you join with one other friend, you each get 25% off your registration. You bring two friends, you save 40% each. So I hope you'll join me at the Standout Virtually Masterclass. And again, we hope to see you back here on behalf of Michelle and I, thank you so much. We've gone a few extra minutes. Have a great September and reset as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank everyone. Take bye care. Bye. We'll see happy you Happy belated birthday, Melissa. Yeah, yes, happy, birthday. happy birthday. Hope you saw that in chat. Your birthday wishes. <laughs> What's that? You can chat before I sign off. I'm gonna stop the recording, but I'll leave oh, chat. I'd love to chat. Okay. Yeah, you've, got, you've got some birthday wishes in the chat bar for now. So with oh. that. Happy belated birthday, Melissa. Look at chat and everyone be well. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Take care.